G'day, welcome back. Does Epsom salt, or as it's known as magnesium sulfate, make seeds germinate better? We're going to start an experiment today and find out once and for all whether this actually does do what people says it does. So here's the method. What we're going to do is we're going to use seed that I've collected or bought and we're going to prepare two trays. One will be the control, which is using the same seed, but will not have magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt applied. The other will, using the same seed. So let's set that up. So the two trays are set up. The one on the left will not be watered with magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. The one on the right will be. The white flecking you're seeing on the top is from winnowing um, from my own leek and onion seed. You can see that it affects both. The seed used for the kale part of the experiment is more of the control because I'm using blue dwarf curled kale from AB Seeds to give that a go. So now I'm going to separate them and we'll water them separately. One with dissolved magnesium sulfate, one with regular rainwater. And now for regular water, I'm going to be using rainwater through this entire experiment. And now with magnesium sulfate, Epsom salts, about the same amount of water. From now on, both trays will only be watered with rainwater. And we'll do a daily check on germination and the number of seed. This isn't a scientific experiment per se. I'm not a scientist, I'm a gardener. But there's roughly about the same amount of seed in both trays. In the non-magnesium trays, we're already seeing my onion seed is germinating. No hint of the leeks yet or kale. In the magnesium beds, you can see plenty of action, just starting in these trays among the onions. And still, no leak, no kale. So I guess what's that telling me about my magnesium experiment so far? Don't know yet, because I would expect those seed to come up really fast. They're very fresh. And normally when I grow my own onion and leek seed, they do come up quickly, much more than seed that's been dry for a much longer period of time. I think the test is going to be the kale. But so far, Epsom salt hasn't made any difference at all. However, as I said, it's day six. So we'll see how we go. Just doing another check-in on the magnesium experiment. The right hand side, the labels marked with MG, magnesium, the left, just rainwater from germination. When you have a look, you can sort of see that the onion and leek seed seem to be a lot denser on the magnesium side. So the allium seed, onion and leek, have responded really well to magnesium. So you can see those two there, the comparison a lot more on the right hand side. However, the interesting part is over here with the organic kale seeds that I bought. This is the rainwater side and you can see that there is quite a few seedlings starting to emerge with the kale. Whereas, if we go over here, let's get that label out of the way. If we go over here, one, two, signs of germination in the kale. It's proving really interesting, but it doesn't change the fact that magnesium hasn't seemed to be made much of a difference at all when it comes to kale germination. So today is the 5th of April. And looking at these two trays, I would have to say 
that I think we still have denser germination with the leeks and the onions in the Epsom salt trays to the right. And still the kale seed seems to be doing much better in the non-Epsom salt area. However, in saying that, um, the kale seeds have got a lot lying down in the magnesium trays. So maybe the water pressure from the watering cans has been a bit heavy for them and misting would have been a better option. I think it's pretty indisputable that leeks and onions love magnesium. Over here, they've propagated well, and I hope they would because they are my seed. But when you have a look in the bed that has no Epsom salt, you're getting quite a few kale seedlings are coming up. Germination on this kale wasn't that great. Whereas on the other side here, almost nothing. Maybe half a dozen. So what's that telling me now? What's the verdict? Alliums, onion, like, yeah, Epsom salt has done the job and I really think it's the way to go. But the kale seeds have got me stumped. I don't know why. Why have the brassicas not responded to it and responded better to rainwater? Maybe it's the mineral level in the rainwater from the first water in. I don't know. I can't explain it. Maybe they're not tolerant of magnesium. Don't know. So what do I reckon? I think I'm going to keep doing it. I think it's worthwhile, but I probably need to try it out with a large variant of seed. And I reckon the next experiment with Epsom salts is going to be with seed in the ground, maybe beet, something like that. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed an inconclusive experiment, but I think I've learned a lot. Hope you have too. See you later.